Okay, welcome back, welcome back. So today, um, I thought we could uh, take what we had learned in the last lesson and apply it to create a chat server. Now, what is a chat server? Well, essentially, a chat server is it's a server process, okay? You have one computer which will allow multiple, perhaps unlimited, I mean, to a certain point, clients to connect to it. And when each person in, in this group uh, usually, the, you know, the, there's no person sitting at the chat server. The people are actually at, at the clients connecting to the chat server. But the purpose of the chat server is to allow all these people to communicate with each other as a group. Now, you, you probably use these types of applications uh, all the time. For example, I think Discord would be uh, a good example of such an application. And there are others. Um, okay, so anyway, the purpose of this chat server is so, such that if one person, let's say this person, you know, We've got one, two, three, four, five people here. If one person sends a message to the chat server, then the chat server will relay this message to all the other clients, um, perhaps even including the person who sent it, just to you know remind the person who sent it that, that yes, indeed, they did send this message. And then, of course, the other people in the group can read the message and accordingly respond. And so when they do respond, you know, let's say number five responds, then that message also gets sent to everybody else as well. So what I'd like to do is to implement this f functionality. And let's go to... Uh, our last lesson, the asynchronous TCP. Now what I'd like to do is to take that code, so it was down here, it was the TCP server that doesn't block, uh, and let's modify that. So I have that code here, I've just renamed it, and here it is, but we have to have some kind of a mechanism to be able to send a message to everyone. Now, the key, the, the secret ingredient in order to be able to accomplish this is it's actually right here in accept connection. Notice this function because remember if, uh, a little bit of a review here. Let's go back to uh, an image here. How does this work? Well, so if you think of this as the server, okay, and we have our Python process inside the server, and we have, we're, let's say this is port 55555, and we're listening on this port, so we have a socket named S that's listening to this port. So if another person connects to port 555 asking for a connection, remember this is TCP, then uh, this function here, self.accept returns. And in this case, it's not blocking because we're actually going to be listening to S. So maybe we should take out this um, comment here. Oops, 
that says that it's blocking. And in fact, it doesn't necessarily need to be file descriptor for in this case. It could be, it, it could be more than that because as, you, as you're going to see, we're going to have more than one person connect. That's all we had last time. But here, we're actually uh, we're, we're, we're naming file descriptor on socket S. And socket S is not a connection socket. It's the listening socket for new connections. And we're adding a file descriptor, which adds this to the FLTK event loop to watch it if any data is going to come in on socket S. Therefore, now, this function will be executed if that happens. And so that's why uh, accept is not blocking. So, but interestingly now, notice here, we create a new socket, self.con, and then we um, now listen to that one. Or we watch, I should say, we watch that one again with the FLTK loop. So going back to the image, as soon as, let's say, client number one connects, this spawns a new socket, okay? And in this case, it's called con. And now that is connected to this client number one. But there's no reason why we only need to have one. We could have as many as we want. We could continue adding sockets here, and they could be connected to more and more clients. How do we do that? So let's look at the code and I want to see if you can figure out a way to accomplish this before you see the code. So I'd like you to try and attempt this and uh, give it a shot and see if you're successful. I'll give you a hint. Use a list. Good luck. By the way, you can simply uh, download this code and modify it. Uh, just copy it from here. Okay, so we're back. So let's go through the code. And well, actually, before we go through the code, let's actually run it and let's see what it looks like. Now, obviously, there's many more things we could do to this code, but um, let's just take a look and see. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run multiple clients. Uh, well, actually, first, uh, we should run the server. So that's going to be TCP uh, server or TCP chat server, I think it was. There we go. So let's run that. And that's going to be on localhost. And um, let's, so really, we don't have a, uh, we don't have a, uh, a browser here because uh, really there's no person that's going to be sitting at the server. This is simply to allow other people to connect and speak with each other. So let's accept connections here and then let's um, go to another, ter let's open up another terminal and um, with this one, we're going to start up the clients. Now the clients, uh, we don't have to modify at all. So it's the same as before from last, from last lesson. So let's start that up. And in fact, oh, you know what? Actually, let's start up multiple of these guys. So I'm going to fork them and again and let's start up let's say three of them okay so we've got three clients here and just so that you could see perhaps what I was typing here I just started three like this and so here they are one two three 
and my server is actually here and the uh, the server here it is so okay so here is the server uh, terminal we'll put it there perhaps so that you can see it and um, and now let's start connecting the clients to the server so let's connect the first one and now let's say this person's name let's just type in a name and we'll say Mary says hi and so notice nobody else is connected and so the only person that gets a reply is Mary herself and so it says okay so Mary you said hi but now let's connect another person connect and now let's say this person is Bob and he says uh, um, can you see this and now if he sends it notice that both Bob and Mary got the message so now and then and then she might say something like yes and now he sees it and now wait what about another person Sarah might say can I join and now she sends the message oops now look what did I forget to do now that's not gonna work right and in fact I got an error here the reason why it didn't work is because I forgot to connect her so now let's connect her and now let's see if I can say can I join I'll click here she says can I join and now notice Sarah says can I join to everybody and now Mary says something like welcome Sarah and now she sends that message and now notice everybody sees welcome Sarah from Mary so this is legitimately we've written uh, like the beginnings of a, a chat server and obviously it could you could take this beyond a chat server it's the same fundamental principle let's say behind any like a simple game server but it's pretty cool what we've been able to accomplish simply with low-level socket library and FLTK and nothing else I mean um, this is pretty cool uh, we did a really good job here in terms of what we what we had to work with and what we what we got done now let's also start closing some of the clients we can close this one and we can close this one and you know if now Sarah sends something um, is anybody here and okay so now nothing else happens but um, what would be kind of cool here right is if we s created another one and uh, let's say this person let's connect this person and let's say this is Agnes yeah, Agnes, and um, she says, uh, uh, I just joined. And so notice it's still okay. And so Mary might say something like, hi, Agnes. There you go. So let's uh, disconnect her and disconnect her. Actually, no, before we disconnect Mary, let's actually close down the server, okay? And notice now, um, this one kind of gets a signal to shut down as well. Anyways, let's um, let's go take a look at the code. So, how did we change the server? I didn't change the client code at all. So, the first thing we did is we took out the send button and we took out the browser. So, really, the only widget left here is just the um, the connecting the the con button to allow connections or accept connections then um, I took out the callbacks for the sending as well and um, what I did what I did however is instead of using a list I actually used a dictionary and I called it con D for a connection dictionary um, the next thing that I did 
is I actually uh, didn't change con but at all. I just left this because essentially this is the one that's going to, this socket s is simply going to be, so nothing here has changed in this function. Uh, I, I kept with the same host, local host and port, and didn't change anything here. I binded and listened, and I'm, I'm always listening to uh, this new socket for, that's watching for incoming connections. But what I did change is the function that it uh, calls. So this is the function, accept connection. So this function uh, gets executed when data comes into socket S, which is when someone's trying to connect. And what I did here is I, instead of making these self.con, I'm actually going to be putting this into a dictionary, so I don't need this to be an instance level variable anymore. It can just be a local variable. And also for FD here. Because what I do is, after I start watching that file descriptor, that's associated with that new connection, okay, that cr gets created when the, when the client connects, I now, ta da 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 line 31, I add that to my dictionary to my connection dictionary, where the key is the file descriptor and the value is the connection. Okay? So that's kind of the one of the one of the important lines is line 31. So that's what happens every time a client connects. It gets added to the dictionary. Once again, key is the file descriptor and the value of the dictionary is the connection itself. Then let's skip close for a minute and let's go to receive data. So now, when does receive data get called? Well, if you look here, if we scroll up a little bit, receive data is actually being set as the callback function when data comes in on any of these new established connections that are inserted or appended into the dictionary. So let's take a look at what happens now, not when a new client is trying to connect, but rather when we are trying to communicate or when data comes in from a client when they're trying to say something to an established connection. First thing we want to figure out is what did they say? That's the data. So we'll go self.cond, our dictionary, and we'll go file descriptor. Now how do we get FD? This is super important. Just like widget callbacks where the first argument is the widget that that received the event, okay, file descriptor callbacks receive the file descriptor as the first argument. So that's the beauty of FLTK in this example, is that re remember where this is where this function is being set up here. It's being set up on line 30. Okay? We are creating this new callback. We're specifying the function name, but FLTK automatically passes the file descriptor to it, and we accept it as variable FD. Okay? We could have named it. We could have named the variable something else, but that's fine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, essentially, we want to get the connection, and so this here, self.cond, which is the dictionary, providing the key, which is the file descriptor, will return the connection. Okay? And that connection we can now call dot receive on it, and we can receive 1024 bytes. You know, probably the message is not going to be bigger than one kilobyte, or this program is going to break. Um, we could, you know, if you wanted to make it uh, secure and all that kind of stuff, you could do it, but th that's not the purpose of, of this demonstration. So now that we have the data, uh, what, they, what the client said, we could just print it to the terminal just for fun. Um, but here I have a specific use case, and that is if that client closes down, so if that client window is actually shut down, then we need to do a few things as like a cleanup here. First thing we need to do is we need to close that connection because 
the, uh, the client has closed down, okay? Because when you receive the empty byte or the, you know, the empty binary string, uh, then after closing the, the connection, we should remove that file descriptor and we should remove that entry from our dictionary. And those are the three things that I've done to clean up if a, if a client closes. Now, if a client sends something other than the empty binary string, that means they sent something, then what we have to do, and look at this, it's so simple. It's one simple loop with one line. For each connection in self.con values, remember what the values are, those are the connections, we'll go con.send all data. And the cool thing here is, since we never decoded the data, right, this data that we're getting is going to be a binary object, okay, or I should say a byte object. It's not a string because we never decoded it. Therefore, we don't have to encode it when we send it because it's already in byte format. And that's it. We're going to iterate. And the, and the nice thing about this is, is that not only does everyone get the message, but the person who sent the message also gets the message. And that's, in fact, that's the way, you know, real um, instant messaging apps work. Now, that, now, in a real one, the ones that I've seen, usually, I mean, there's a little bit of formatting difference. For example, the background color might change or the justification of the text might change. You might move it to the right if it's the person uh, typing it on their own computer and other people might show up on their left. But those are just formatting things. You know, those are easily uh, modifiable. But essentially, that's the whole program. The only thing that really I've skipped over here is the close. And so for the close, uh, I would just say iterate over each connection that's established, close it, and remove the file descriptor. And and I, I have it as a try except uh, just as I had before. So that's it. That's, that's the solution and it works. And it's actually not that complicated because really the only functions that we changed, we only deleted a few things out of init and the only thing we added to init was line 15, was creating the, the empty dictionary and we didn't change this function at all we changed this. We changed accept connection, uh, and really the only kind of new line in accept connection was line 31. And other than that, we simply uh, the other kind of like important part was iterating over all the connections in the receive data part and sending it to everybody. So really, not that hard, but. The, the power of the, the framework we're using and um, everything just comes together and it really made a, a, a neat demonstration and I hope you enjoyed it. All right, see you next time.